Hey guys, hey bitches. It's another Mr. Walker 7 video, and uh, every now and then I'll review an anime when I'm not making. Well, I guess I'm still not over making funny videos. We can call this a funny video. Since I was 12, me and my friends all knew about this hentai called Bible Black. What Bible Black is, it's the hentai everyone, my, just like every, here's the thing about hentais, they're based off a video game, and I've been trying to watch a bunch of different animes now, but I don't know whether to start with the anime or the manga, since they're usually based off a book or a novel. In this case, with hentais and dating sims, uh, they get the air effect. Air is an anime that's based off a shitty video game. And this kind of follows that same rule. This Bible Black stuff's based on a crappy ass video game, hentai game. That I really hope Benzai starts reviewing since I love his game fab videos, but uh, I'm not gonna bother with a fucking video game. So I decided I'm just going to get into this, since it's only six episodes. Now, what interests me about the series is that uh, it, it really is... No, I'm not going to strip for you guys. I just like showing chess. It's a really interesting series because uh, I'm not going to start off with the beginning beginning. I'm going to start with the plot beginning because they start you in the past by 12 years but it's just a device to get you get the feel of how the story goes what threw me off is that I expected that there'd be like one sex scene per episode but there's just like seven per episode and it all it, a lot of it may or may not be excessive, but it really does serve its purpose. Now, the main character is called Taki Mino Missouri Mino Say. It's a really interesting name. No one calls him by his first name. They call him by his last name, which is a Mino Say, you know, whatever. Probably doesn't have the no part, but uh, that's how they identify him. That's I guess it's a Japanese thing to call someone by your last name for some reason. But in the video games, his first name is Taki. Like the Mexican snack that everyone except for me enjoys. <clears throat> And he's going to a school that uh, 12 years ago had a satanic sacrifice. And in that satanic sacrifice, it was a virgin sacrificing where they're trying to make a blood pact with the devil, have him be summoned. But the bitch that was running it was killing everybody because there wasn't enough blood. Turns out the chick wasn't a virgin, she got raped vaginally. And of course, uh, as she was dying, the devil said, okay, I will give you a new body, you know, revive you, so you can continue about. And so that's what she did. She said, yes, I want to live, I don't want to die. A lot of that wasn't her fault, basically. She, she, was, she was innocent of this, for the most part. But 12 years in, uh, she transfers. Uh, she's been enjoying her life so far. This this chick. Uh, but this is where the plot begins. She transfers to her old school. She's looking for a virgin. And when the the real plot starts to begin, when we go into the main time zone, the main timeline, which is centered around this time, 12 years 
instant of present. Uh, you're gonna hate this bitch because she's she was really seductive in the beginning with that girl on girl action, but out of her vagina comes a dick. It's some weird occult power she has. The main character Talkie, he finds a book. It's not the death note. He doesn't write on it, and people start dying. No, it's a spell book. The Bible Black. It has an occult little bookmark on it. It has a. It's very. It has like little locks and everything. It's cool. But uh, he, he uses the tricks under some offensive spells and things of that nature to burn things, push things, uh, blood sacrifice. Virgin sacrifices, summon the devil, a reversal to that, body switching. But he's just using it to get laid. We're supposed to be rooting for this guy, right? I don't know why they're going to this school. Twelve years ago in the basement of the campus, there were fucking virgin sacrifices and satanic rituals and occultism. I wouldn't want my kid to go to a high school like that. I understand for college, especially in the Ivy Leagues, that's a normal thing. Sacrifices, blood rituals, that, that, that's common for that, but for fucking high school? Hell no. Leave that, leave that shit to the guys going to university. And that's their drama. They're old enough to have that little eugenic training where the losers get sacrificed and winners don't go to hell. Everyone else is in between there. They're, they just sacrifice the fucking virgin and pat the devil when they're going to hell. <laughs> and no, I don't think that all universities are like that. I'm not going to be an unfair prick. I, I'm just staring at this because I don't want it to freeze. Don't, don't feel uncomfortable, mofos. Uh, you ain't all that. So that confuses me, like, we're parents in all of this, but then I realize it's a hentai. And in the magical world of hentai, parents don't exist. So, since her life is almost done, and once she dies, because her body was limited only to 12 to 13 years, so... Um, she, when she dies, she's going to hell. I mean, she fucking made a pact with the devil. So her plan is, basically, she's going to switch bodies with a virgin on the anniversary of that day and she's gonna be alright uh... the girl's gonna lose her soul in that inner place and she'll be okay. Uh, I don't know how that works I'm mean, sure it's the same body but still it's not like you switch souls it's the same, it's different souls uh, who cares if their bodies switch Just because I take control of someone else's body doesn't mean that I'm exempt from my own responsibilities. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know the little technicalities like that. But this is her plot, and uh, the girl she's virgin she finds is mid talkies like a Minozor is a childhood friend, uh, the one that, that he like alienated to like fuck all these other random chicks, but now he's gonna, now you're supposed to feel like he's a hero because he wants to save her. And by all means, he should save her. Fuck all these other girls on the side, well, I'm not gonna be a white knight, maybe he's, he just has that alpha status. I still think it's kind of being a dick uh, dick whore. It's being a fucking mad slut. And last year I may have thought that was cool. But come on, we gotta be men of character here. soundtrack is really, really dated, and 
you'll hear the same shit every episode. Luckily, there isn't a long opening theme. There, there is no fucking opening theme. There's just a few seconds of an intro, I guess. The ending theme is just like some weird composed theme that uh, usually with random clips at the end of that were rehashed from the previous episode with really strange filters added. I don't get that. And some of the filters they show are really fucking weird. But I actually like the soundtrack in a sense, because they really fit the scenes, and, uh... It, was, was it simple? A lot of times, like, uh... There, there wasn't any technicality to the song, so... It, it just set a very creepy... Dark, sad ambiance, like, uh... I, I, like, tr we were trying to make sense of all of this. It's supposed to be somewhat of a... Uh, it has a soap opera vibe. Like, I hear the soundtrack soap operas and some of the same thing. Except mixed with a few strange chords of Russians and things like that. The show is it's about a cult of them, really. And you're supposed to get off at the soulless fucking disturbance. It really pushes the boundaries of what's right wrong in the porno without going into oil bay destruction. The nigga dicks don't go, come into play uh, just some really dark maniacal shit. Yeah, I think the Eastern crowd has really nailed down what being unholy is like. Fucking dick coming through crevasses with JJ. That's some pretty dark and twisted shit. Uh, with that being said, it's a, a six episode anime. If you want to understand more about it, like, you haven't crossed the bridge, you didn't fill in the blanks yourself on these characters' backstories, if you watch this prequel and the side stories, just to get in, and just to get more of an idea on the good and bad of each character, because I think this anime doesn't characterize enough. I got a vibe on how each of these characters are minor ones. Yeah, it, it was it wasn't substantial. I wouldn't blame anyone if they didn't get the full picture, because uh, the characters are vaguely characters, but what do you expect from a six episode hentai? I mean, I, I got that first chick the guy banged, she was kind of way too clingy and crazy for the dick, uh, the witchcraft geek. <laughs> the witchcraft fangirl or something like that. Yeah, you got a vibe of her character. You got a vibe of how every character is supposed to be. You're supposed to understand that uh, the antagonist isn't really an antagonist. You, you hate her straight off the way because she confused your dick like that. And because she's so fucking immoral, but you realize that for the most part she was making moral decisions, she just... Her weakness was her will to live. That's the ironic thing. Her weakness was that. And that's when it brought about all this other stuff. So it does get Nietzsche in a way. You know, she'd rather live than die with a short life and uh, undergoing all that travesty and still have her soul. And of course, if the ending confuses you too much, then always watch the sequel to know of what really happened to the girl in the end. Like, was she completely possessed or partially? Anyway, don't watch it. 